A Chinese exam from a New York high school recently shocked Chinese internet users. The first Chinese character on the paper is hard even for Chinese people to recognize. It's pronounced Jiu. An obscure Chinese character is actually not difficult at all for our foreign guest for this show because not only he can read modern Chinese characters, but he can also read ancient Chinese characters which were in use 3,500 years ago. Today, I'm very delighted to have uh, with us Richard Sears from America joining us from Shanghai. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Liu Xing, it's glad to, I'm glad to be here today. Yes, so you are known to many people in China as Uncle Hanzi or Uncle Chinese character. How did that name came about? Well, uh, I was 40 years old, and uh, I was trying to learn Chinese, and it was very difficult, so I made a website, spent 20 years making a website, and in 2010, uh, a lot of Chinese noticed it, and people gave me the name Uncle Hanza. Why did you spend so much time studying Chinese? What about Chinese characters that fascinate you, that made you start to study Chinese, but also go very deep as far as studying ancient Chinese characters? I mean, many Chinese won't even recognize a handful. Well, I think you must know about Chinese characters. There's an important rule. Uh, every part of every Chinese character is derived from a pictograph. And if you know the original pictograph, and you know the original meaning, and you know how it changed, then every character is logical. If you don't know its origins, then you are simply blindly memorizing a bunch of complicated strokes. Exactly. I also tell my and friends... When I was 40 yes. years old... I also tell my friends no, that every Chinese character is a picture. You need to look at it from like a picture and also try to explain to them what represents sun, for instance, what represents a river. Uh, was it easy for you to, to decipher the picture hidden in the Chinese characters? No, because most books are wrong and even experts disagree on many of the origins and you have to have a you have to look at many, many uh, ancient characters to actually get the one that looks most like a pictograph. So I spent about 20 years uh, collecting all of the known oracle bone characters. Uh, they, were, they date from about from 1000 BC to 1500 BC. And the uh, bronze characters, which date from about uh, 1000 BC to 200 BC, and the uh, seal characters, which date uh, from about 200 BC to 200 AD. I collected 96,000 characters. And so that's why a lot of people think my uh, website is very interesting. It has the largest database of ancient characters on the web. That's amazing. I actually was browsing your website and I found a very interesting function is not only you can find such huge archive of ancient Chinese characters, but you can also interact with it. For instance, if you want to find out how a modern Chinese character was written 3000 years ago, you can just type in, for instance, what I'm going to do here is to type in on your website the character which represents spring. As we're talking about the spring festival, for instance, if I talk, type in the character Chun, which means spring, we can see all of the characters here. Could you please, Richard, explain to us the evolution of these characters from Oracle to the latest version of Seal of this character Chun? Well, when you try to, to analyze modern character, uh, you can't see anything. It doesn't look like any kind of a picture. So the first step is to look at the modern character and see how it changes over the years uh, to the original pictographic image. And if, if you see the correct pictographic image uh, on my website, you will notice that there are two things at the top. And th that represents grass. Mm -hmm. And below that, there is a character pronounced twin. And you will also see a character uh, which looks like the sun. And so spring is represented by pictures of several sprouts and grass mm -hmm. and a pictograph of the sun. 
And if you study that, you can see how it uh, gradually evolves into the modern character, which doesn't look like anything at all. Yeah. So um, how do you advise people then by learning the evolution of Chinese characters? How do you advise them to study Chinese? And what do you think it is important that people need to understand such evolution and follow these stories? Well, I'm a physicist and I try to think logically, and I don't like to memorize things blindly. So when I was 40, I had a lot of trouble uh, memorizing the characters because they did not appear to have any logic. But if you can uh, see how they evolve over the years and how the, uh, the meaning evolves, uh, then every character has logic. And that's why I tried to put my uh, website together I found a lot of references, but many of the references contradict each other. So I decided I needed to make myself a very large database of all the known characters and look at all the explanations and then uh, put down the explanation that I thought was most logical. Mm -hmm. What is this website um, potentially meaningful for the Chinese people? I mean, you have received quite some recognition from within China. Were you surprised with this kind of uh, recognition? And what do you think the Chinese people can get from your website? Yes, at first I was very surprised because I worked on it for nearly 20 years and everybody thought it was a waste of money and a waste of time. And then all of a sudden in 2010, uh, many thousands of people uh, recognized it and started coming to it. And now it's one of the most used uh, websites in the world. But I think it's important for Chinese not to just blindly memorize characters. Uh, the origin of characters, the pictographic origins of characters are very interesting and can teach you a lot about history and a lot about culture and a lot about the people. Do you think it is important that we look back at not just the roots of our characters as Chinese people, but the roots of our country, of our history, of us as a people, so that we can um, continue to, to go forward in the future without forgetting our past and our traditions. I think it's important to know where you came from. There's a lot of things in the modern society that we can't easily explain. But if we know a little bit about history, uh, then uh, things become more clear as to why they are the way they are today. I understand when you were at, in your 40s, you suffered a heart attack. How did that incident change your life and your work with these Chinese characters? I realized that I don't know when I'm going to die. None of us do. So I asked myself a question. If I absolutely knew that I was going to live 40 years, what would I do? Well, I know myself, and I know I would probably waste the next 10 years. And I asked myself, if, if I absolutely knew I only had 24 hours, what would I do? Well, I couldn't do very much. I could just call up my friends and say goodbye. But if I absolutely knew I only had one year, 365 days, what would I do? So I decided I would get busy and computerized the Shouwen Jiezi, which is the first Chinese dictionary. After a year, I had not died, and so I uh, <laughs> continued going for the next almost 25 years, and now I have the largest database of ancient characters in the world online. And you continue doing that as long as you are alive? As long as I'm alive, I'm going to continue to update it. But I continue to understand more and more about Chinese characters. So I think in about March 1st, I am planning to make a major update. I have not updated my website much for the past five years. But I've, working, I've been working on a major database for the past five years. And hopefully in March, I will be able to update my website and there will be a lot more stuff on it. Mm -hmm. my, last, my last question really quickly. Do you think the Chinese character, the Chinese language, will be the most popular language for the world? Do you think there is one day that this is going to happen? Well, unfortunately, I don't think that will happen. <laughs> uh, Chinese, Chinese are 
faced with memorizing thousands of characters. And for most Chinese, they blindly memorize the characters. And this presents a problem. There are other problems. We have millions of people coming into China, millions of people going out to China. Chinese want to go to Europe and Asia. And 30 years ago uh, in China, very few people could speak English. Now everybody has had at least 10 years or yeah. 12 years of English. In the next 30 years, I think everyone in the world will speak English. And uh, I fear that Chinese characters at some time in the future may uh, come to an end. And so one of the things my website, I hope my website can do is to preserve the history and explanation of the pictographic ancient characters for modern, uh, for coming generations, for your children and my children and my grandchildren. So I hope my website can preserve this information. Thank you so much for joining us, Richard Sears. And the website of Richard Sears is ChineseEtymology.org. Babylon's uh, cuneiform and the ancient Maya characters have already become relics, while Chinese characters are still in use after a few thousand years. When I look through Richard's uh, website, I can see the story behind each character. As he describes how the characters fo are formed, you can see Chinese people's imagination and their history and culture, all thanks to Richard's valuable project.